Hi! Welcome to Dog's Breakfast. I'm your host, Nido, and today our guest is Heather Watts. <laughs> she is a self-taught contemporary pop surrealist artist. Heather's artwork contains paintings and drawings of symbolism, spirituality, social commentary, and beyond. Definitely combining the whimsical and innocent with a sense of gravity, Heather's artwork is playful and haunting. Welcome! Thank you! <laughs> that was a great introduction. Oh, thank you! Some of it was her words. <laughs> I can't lie. Um, so for my first question, um, do you find inspiration for your art in everyday things or is it more conceptual? Um, it's actually changing. So. In the past, it was a lot more like go deep into my head and see what's there. And uh, now I find it's coming more from everyday things. Like I'll see a leaf that's bent in a certain way, or you know, clouds, or I'll see things on the street. I saw a you know when trees have those big, um, it's, it's almost like a tumor in the tree. Oh right, like the big like yeah, yeah. Extra growth thing. Yeah, yeah, like a big growth. I saw one of those that looks like a big skull the other day. So I took a picture of it because I'm gonna draw it. But oh, wow. I'm finding that more and more things in everyday life start to inspire ideas for me. So I really like that. It's it's kinda new to me and it's exciting. Yeah. Nature's always a really big inspiration. That's kinda where I get a lot of like ideas, like symbolisms mm -hmm. and, and stuff. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay, now if you were transported into any one of your paintings um, which character would you be? Hmm. I hope that I would be... Oh my gosh, there's so many. <laughs> I mean, a lot of my paintings have a character like this, who's sort of courageous and little and, um, brave. And I hope that I would be that character in the paintings, but I think, I don't know, maybe, like... There's so many different ones. Like in this one, there's sort of like these evil vultures up here too. And there's kind of background. Often maybe I'm these background characters that are <laughs> sort of watching things from from behind the scenes or from the distance. But they're, kind of, they're still involved. <laughs> they are. They're, they're, still, they're still involved. Um, but it's funny because actually this one, I painted one of the characters in a costume with red hair here and it's a unicorn costume because I was obsessed with unicorns when I was a little kid. So this sort of that's is you. me. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. that's so wonderful. <laughs> well, you look very happy. Yeah. <laughs> Bonsoir monsieur, je m'appelle Olivier, je serai votre serveur pour la soirée. Our specials today are as follows. A pan-seared braise roasted and fried cut of exercise wheel, farm raise weasel, served with a side of kale mash, topped with a dollop of grease, accompanied by a black pudding to cleanse the palate. Next, we have a terrine of argel bargel soup that comes with a crisp parmesan salad to start. In addition, we have an in-house made goat's cheese ravioli sprinkled liberally with chocolate chips and dried cranberries. And last, but certainly not least, we have our catch of the day. Catch of the day, sir. Very well, right away.
Um, okay, I'm gonna give you a quote. Now, you've okay. described your art with the following statement. Suffused with pessimistic shadows and redemptive illumination. So would you compare this dichotomy with the everyday struggle of right and wrong, you know, light versus dark, or is it more like the narrative of the hero's journey? I think sort of more the second one, because I, I think it's, there's not, for me, it's not a versus. It's not a good versus evil, mm -hmm. or a dark versus light. It's um, like a, synergy is maybe the wrong word, but it's, the finding of light in darkness, or the being mm. able to experience light within the shadow of darkness. So that, oh, for example, okay. in this piece, you have these dark dark figures here, these vultures and dead trees and all the fallen leaves, there's bones down here. But within the center of that coming up, this is the, the tree and the heart and hope and all of that. So I think a lot of it, um, like for example, this, this is from a show called Small Heroes, was mm -hmm. the name of the show. And so the concept behind that for me is sort of, um, I mean, obviously this is a very heroic imagery in here, but <laughs> it's more the idea of being a, like an everyday hero, a hero in your own life, a hero to just, you know, s struggle through and get up in the morning and do what you have to do. And that, that, you know, no matter how bad things are, there's always, um, not that there's always some good, but it's like that a balance. In, yeah, yeah there's a balance, and in experiencing what's bad in the world, that 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 balance shows itself. I think, or I see it, and I try and paint that in my work. So would it be similar to like when people say like you don't know the good until you've experienced the bad? Um, s somewhat, but even maybe a step further than that. In that, the good is itself wrapped up somehow within the bad. Mm, so that okay. when things are bad, if you step into them fully, the good is in there waiting for you. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
lamb. Yeah, and exactly. And yeah. There's all kinds of things attached to whatever animal you choose to represent that character. And the other thing I like about using animals is that it takes away um, any preconceived notions that we might put on a person based on race or gender. It's just like you're just looking at this character as a character. It's not a black person or a white person. It's not right. a man or a woman. It's like a rat or it's <laughs> a, a fox or whatever it is, right? It doesn't, like, it's a much more, I think people connect easier. They don't bring baggage to it mm, as much. Right. Maybe because it's sort of like a childhood thing of connecting with animals through movies and that kind of stuff. I don't know. But I... Personally, I connect a lot easier with images of animals, I think, too. So, yeah. Okay, so then, if that's the case, so, because art is a particular moment in time, so what might someone take away from your artwork if they were to look at it 50 years from now? Hmm. I like to think that it's somewhat timeless. Like, I, I think I, I mean, when I paint, I feel like, I'm not intentionally painting things that aren't current, but it seems like in my head there's sort of an invisible barrier where um, anything like past, say, 19, late, late 1960s, anything that came after that isn't mm -hmm. going to get into my art somehow. <laughs> like, I don't know why that is. I've never painted That's anything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I painted, uh, like, I've put John F. Kennedy in my paintings before. That's maybe, like, the upper limits of or Vietnam War I've referenced. So, but it's never got, oh, I, I actually have referenced the Iraq War in one of them. So oh, I lied. Okay. Oh, I lied. A little modern here. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I think, I don't know, I, I think they're, I hope they're timeless, I hope they're still relevant. I, I like to think that the political themes that I comment on are um, larger themes, they're not, you know, they're not things that are just in the news cycle for a few days and then gone, they're these larger themes that are relevant 100 years ago, they'll be relevant 100 years from now, and I think, um, I don't know, I sort of, when I'm a little bit political with my art, I feel like my job is not to um, do the the daily political cartoon type stuff. I feel mm -hmm. like it's more to tackle these broader, bigger themes that people don't always necessarily think about because they're not in the media. They're just they're they're sort of his, historical themes, I guess. They're bigger than than a single news cycle or right. single day. Yeah, and I think that's why art is such an important vehicle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Heather, thank you so much for coming out with us today. Is thank that, you for yeah. having me. <laughs> awesome. All right, everyone. Det gør jeg ikke. Han jammer bare eksistentielt, når han vil. Society for reasons that seem good to me, and therefore do not obey their laws. <laughs> <laughs> you two are brothers.
How do you respond to allegations that you squash crickets? Det gør jeg ikke. Jeg spiller cricket og squash. Kenton, Evan and Steve the Rabbit, uh, would you describe your collaboration as the wine of a hummingbird's wings or the recording of a black box on a plane? Is there a third option? I'm glad you asked that. If you would indulge in the sleepy mole press, we would like to show the three of you a video of a bird bathing and hear your thoughts and impressions. Det ligner en fyr, jeg mødte i Venezuela. Ja, ja, det er en pleasant job. Ikke mange, men lidt. Ikke mange, men lidt. Det hedder vist også Steve, tror jeg. Kunne vi please have a withering stare? Question for the three of you. When will you appear? Oh, right now, I would expect. Well, that has been a bit of a dog's breakfast, isn't it? A bit of a mess. It's a right mess. Thank you so much for your time. Dog's Breakfast Person of the Hour is Mr. Bruce Lee. I'm Gabriel Carter, this is Nido, and we'll see you around the bend.